empowered and employed. What does that mean? What does it mean to navigate the workplace with a disability? Well, I want to take you through my early, the early stages of my navigation with my disability. And I think that my first speech in this five part series is so relevant because in the military, I was a Calvary Scout. And in basic training, we learn how to do land nav, which is when you go to a big open field with the compass and the map, and you have certain points on that map, and you have to find your way through certain points. So just like I did as a Calvary Scout in the Army, I had to navigate my way through the workforce as an individual with a disability. Now today I'm going to be talking about how I became disabled and how I had to navigate my way through the military and how ultimately I had to get out of the military because I became disabled. June 17, 2007, I was shot in both my legs by a sniper. Luckily, I was able to keep both my legs. Doctors didn't know if I would be able to walk again. I was shot in my femoral artery. It shattered my femur. Doctors just didn't know what the extent of my injuries were. I had two blood transfusions. I had to accept a, a transfusion with German blood the second time because 2007 was the bloodiest year of the war and the American troops were getting hammered. And when I was injured in June of 2007, the hospital in Longshore, Germany ran out of American blood. It took 13 surgeries to repair my femoral artery. 13 surgeries to repair my femur. And I was left severely disabled after that injury. And this was only two years in to my military contract. I was 20 years old. I had joined the military right out of high school. So I was in 361, 361st Cavalry Regiment, stationed at Fort Carson, Colorado, in Colorado Springs. I was in the 2nd Infantry Division, my first unit out of basic training. And the doctor said, well, David, we just don't know the extent of your injuries. We don't know exactly if you're going to be able to walk again. We don't know if you're going to be able to move your toes again because the bullet also struck my sciatic nerve, which caused me to lose the use of the toes on my left foot. So in the military, I was on something called a soft shoe profile which means that instead of wearing the military boots that you guys see, the tan military boots, I was allowed to wear tennis shoes. And because I wanted to stay in the Army, I still had to be physically fit. Now, I was stationed to a unit called the Warrior Transition Unit on Fort Carson, Colorado. I believe this unit was an experimental unit at the time, and the, mil and the Army wasn't ready for how many soldiers were getting injured and getting sent home from the battlefield. So things within this unit were hectic. The rules changed often. They flipped. They flopped. I became an E5 in the unit as I still tried to advance in my military career, but physically, I just couldn't keep up. Now, the military test, uh, the PT test, they're different now in 2020, but back when I was injured, 2007, 2008, 2009, you still had two minutes of sit-ups, two minutes of push-ups, and a two-mile run. I couldn't do those activities anymore. So I had to take what are called uh, alternative PT tests. So instead of doing a two-mile run, I had to ride on a bike with, uh, I believe it had like a little five pound weight on it. And I had to try my hardest to pass on this bike. So I'm sitting on this bike and I have an instructor watching me and I'm going as fast as I can on this bike with this weight on it. And my left leg, it's just killing me. But I'm thinking to myself, 
David, you want to stay in the army. You have to do this. You have to do this. You can't take a break. You can't stop. This is what you have to do if you want to stay in the army. I had became an E5 at 20 years old. A sergeant, for those of you who aren't familiar with military lingo. I ended up passing my PT test. But because this unit was so experimental and because I didn't want to be this disabled soldier, I didn't want to be a disgrace, I continued to do PT with the unit. And they and someone in my unit told me, well, David, well, at the time, Sergeant Kendrick, if you want to stay in the military, you're going to have to pass PT tests and you're still going to have to stay physically fit. The lower half of my body was pretty much broken. So someone said, well, you have to work out with your upper body. I couldn't do push-ups. But the military, they have an alternative exercise for everything. So they said, well, David, since you can't do push-ups, you're going to do overhead arm claps, which are when you put your arms out like this and you just clap. And you just clap your hands in cadence. And I began to feel this pain in my left shoulder. And the pain got so bad that I went from doing my overhead arm claps like this every day to just being able to do one. It wasn't even an overhead arm clap anymore. It was a high five in the air to no one. And I was going on these walks because I couldn't go on runs with the unit. I was going on walks on the track for two miles instead of running two miles. And while I'm walking, I'm thinking to myself, man, my leg really hurts. And I still have to wear soft shoes throughout the day? Man, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And my unit's not giving me a chance to take a break or anything. But I want to stay in the Army. I want to be a soldier. I turned 21 years old, and I joined the military to get away from my hometown. I can't give up. But things in the unit continue to get worse, worse, worse. And eventually an article came out in the New York Times about our unit because a soldier in there, a soldier within our unit had went to the New York Times and told them of the conditions that we were facing. And then things started to change. Rules were flip-flopping. One moment you could do this, one moment you couldn't do this. David, you do have to do PT. Now, David, you don't have to do PT but I wanted to stay in the military. And I don't think the military, the army, they comply by any ADA law or anything like that. So I had many talks with my leadership and I said, oh, I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know what the army is gonna be like in five years, in 10 years. And this was in 2009, the year before I got out of the military. I said, I can barely keep up with the physical demands of the Army right now as an E-5, three years in the Army. I want this to be my entire career. What do I do? Do I give, my, do I give myself a chance to be a civilian? Or do I stay in the Army, which is very physically demanding with all these disabilities, and I have to have all these special profiles, I can't deploy anymore, and... But the chances of me getting promoted are going to be slim because part of your promotion points comes from your PT test. Well, without knowing what to do, without any real guidance, and still going through physical therapy, in 2010, I decided to get out of the military. and continue my land nav course throughout the civilian job force as an employee with a, uh, with a disability. But I, I still stayed employed and empowered. And that's what my next speech is going to be about.